I'm Von Houston. In today's photo news brief, Nikon is now number two. Nikon has just released firmware updates for mirrorless cameras not named Z9 or Z8. Sony has made a big announcement about a mirrorless camera for the least of us. And finally, a sponsor is giving away free stuff on my channel. I love free stuff. How about you? It's time for another photo news brief. Are you like me and like to collect photography equipment that you don't really need? Do you have mystery boxes dropped at your front door that you sneak into the house? Then you will love my sponsor. Me, I'm giving away free stuff like this Nikon D5000 for my channel for making it to a thousand subscribers. If you are a subscriber, it's time I paid you back for watching my videos about photography and stuff. I will leave the link in the descriptions below so that you can have the chance to win some cool prizes like this camera. If you've been watching sales reports, Nikon with the Z8 is chipping away at Canon and Sony's market share, but it's Nikon's Z-mount lenses that are helping the company rise from single digit shares to double digit shares in the interchangeable lens market. According to BCN rankings, Nikon Z-mount lenses were in fifth place in June of last year in market share. As of June of 2023, Nikon is in second place. I wonder what happened to increase Nikon market shares. Go to the link above. Now this ranking is based on cumulative Z-mount lens sales from Nikon, Tamron, Sigma, and other third-party retailers. Nikon, by playing it friendly with other lens makers, has given consumers more budget-friendly options. Look at the chart. Charts don't lie. I will leave a link in the description below if you would like to read the full article on Nikon's rise to number two. While I'm talking about Z-mount lenses, let's discuss the rumored Nikkor Z 35mm f1.2 S lens. According to Nikon rumors, it will be announced in August or September. This prime lens will complement Nikon's Prime Z lenses like the Nikkor Z 35mm and the 85mm f1.2 lenses. If you like to be closer to the subject, this lens is for you. With the aperture of 1.2, events in low light such as concerts or sporting events shouldn't be a challenge. I love my crop sensor 35mm 1.4 for my Fujifilm camera that I'm using for this video. Notice the background blur. This is one of the benefits of a low aperture lens. Look at that separation. Imagine the possibilities for your photographer's cinematic needs with a full frame lens like that Nikkor Z 35mm f1.2 S lens. I can't wait until it hits the shelves. In other Nikon news, Nikon has released firmware updates for the Nikon Z62, the Z72, and the Z6 and the Z7 mirrorless cameras. Version 1.6 for the Z62 and the Z72. These are minor updates. They fix the following. If you go into the custom setting menus, they've added the always on when not in use option. It's in custom setting D9. They've added D10 warm display colors. They've also added D11 image frame. That's a new one, I enjoyed that one. And they also added G7 red recorder frame indicator. That's been a long time coming. They've added viewfinder display size. These are the fixes for this update. A drop in brightness sometimes occurred in photographs taken with a flash. Now, that has occurred in my photography, and I always thought it was a TTL flash, so I always used manual, so I have to look at that again. In some cases, the OK button could not be used to interrupt the interval timer or focus shift photography when the viewfinder was used. Next, Sony has released another crop sensor camera, the Sony A6700. It was released today. This is a camera for those that want to stay in the Sony ecosystem. 
It's compact. It has better autofocus than most APS-C cameras in this segment. Here are the specs. It has a 26 megapixel sensor. Most people thought it might have a 30, but it only has a 26. That'll help in low light, maybe. Video 4K 60p, 4K 120p max with a 1.6 crop. Autofocus points at 759 points with a hybrid phase contrast detection. The LCD is three inches, uh, one million dots. The viewfinder is 236 million dots, OLED EVF. Uh, only one memory card, just one, just one. This is the budget camera. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, burst speed 11 frames per second in mechanical shutter. It only weighs 493 grams, which makes it very compact, you know, or 17.4 ounces. Now we'll do a quick rundown of the pros and cons because there are other videos out there that can go into more detail. Uh, these are the pros. It has an impressive AI-powered autofocus. It has the same Bionic XR processor seen on the Sony ZV-E1 and the Sony A7R5. Sony has always had the best autofocus. It has great handling and physical controls. One of the improvements of this camera is the record button has been moved from the side to the top. The grip is now larger for better handling. It has a solid battery life. And this camera is very log friendly due to the size and weight. One day I might decide to vlog, but I don't vlog because I think my head's too big. Phobia. It has a long list of lenses available for Sony cameras. Sony is number one in interchangeable lenses, by the way. And this camera costs $1,400, just like the uh, 6600 did. Now the cons. The menu system is complex for beginners, which most Sony, which most Sony cameras tend to be. The IBIS is not the best for video. Please remember, this is a budget camera. It has a heavy 1.6 crop on 4K 120p slow-mo and noise creeps in at an ISO of 6400. As you know, this is the crop sensor or ABS-C sensor and they have problems uh, at higher ISOs. So tell me what you think about this latest entry from Sony, the A6700. Do you think you could get a more budget-friendly camera like a full-frame Nikon Z5? Leave those comments. So today we learned one thing. Nikon wants to stay on consumers' minds with updates and big product releases. That might explain why they released a minor update to show their commitment to Nikon Z6, Z7, Z6 II, and Z7 users. I can't wait until they release the Nikon Z6 III and the Nikon Z7 III. It's on the way. It may be later in the year, but it will get there. Keep watching my channel for more updates on Nikon releases and other photography-related news. Thank you for watching. Watch my other videos.